Hello everybody, and welcome to the BlueWorks Live March 2018 release preview session. I'm Margaret Thorpe, BlueWorks Live Offering Manager, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the BlueWorks Live release that's coming out this weekend on Saturday, March 24th. With this release of BlueWorks Live, we've improved the productivity and flexibility of diagram editing, so editors can now select multiple diagram elements to move, copy, delete, and color. The selected elements can also be converted to a subprocess. Editors can define custom activity numbering for their process diagrams now, and viewers can turn on that activity numbering. And editors can reposition line labels in their diagrams. We've also enabled further customization of process properties. So all users can configure their property details panel to hide, display, and reorder properties now. And we've also added 10 custom text properties for extending the repository. We've added more flexible printing options. So process diagrams can be printed with page breaks on milestone boundaries. You can include link processes in the printouts. You can choose to include all uh, sub-processes already expanded. And you can choose to include a single page diagram overview. And we've also enhanced reporting. There's a new format for the Excel space export, which allows subspaces to be exported to a single file. So let's take a look at these enhancements in more detail. First of all, let's look at the multi-select enhancements. So you can now select multiple elements within a process diagram for moving, copying, coloring, deleting, or converting into a process, subprocess. To do this, just use control click to select the elements that you want or you can select the first element and use shift click to select the last activity. This will cause all other activities in the shortest path to automatically be included in the selection. Just like with the single select, selected elements will be highlighted with a gray border, as you can see here in the upper right area of the slide around the review results activity. When you right click on the selection, it will bring up a menu where you will have the choice of copying, deleting, coloring, or converting the selected elements to a subprocess. You can also move the selected elements by dragging and dropping the selection. Let's just take a quick look at some examples of how this works. So let's look at how you can color your multi selection. So in this example, I've selected three non contiguous activities for coloring using Control Click. You can see those highlighted in the diagram on the left. I right click to bring up the menu just like you do with the single selection and I applied the yellow color from the menu. So if you look at the menu you'll see that not all options are enabled. For a non-contiguous selection like this I'm only allowed to color or move the selection. That's why other menu options are disabled. Now let's take a look at deleting a multi-selection. In this example I've selected the first five elements of this diagram, the three activities, a gateway, and an end event using control click. As you can see, all of my menu options are enabled for this selection. So I click delete, and as you can see on the bottom, all of those elements have been removed from the diagram. So it's worth mentioning that if you're trying to delete a multi-selection and the delete option isn't enabled on your menu, then you probably selected a non-contiguous set of elements. This is currently a limitation on the delete operation that will lift in a further release. Let's take a look at moving a multi-selection. In this example, I've selected the three activities in the subprocess on the bottom right, and I've moved them up a level to the main diagram just simply by dragging and dropping them onto the preceding flow line. As I drag the selection to a valid position, all of the selective items are highlighted in green, as you can see here on the left bottom portion of the slide. And when I drag the selection onto the line, the subprocess disappears, as you can see in the final diagram on the upper left, where basically those three activities have been moved up a level to the main diagram and the subprocess has disappeared. Now let's look at moving a non contiguous multi selection. So in this example, you can see on the top portion that I've selected the three non contiguous yellow activities and moved them all to another swim lane. I did this by dragging the selection, positioning my cursor on the target swim lane, background check vendor, and dropping them. And when you do this and the selection's been dragged to a valid position, you'll know because once again all of the selected items will be highlighted in green. So you can also copy and paste the multi-selection. 
In this example, I've just selected four activities, a gateway and an end event using control click, as you see here on the left. And then I created a new diagram, basically, which you see in the upper right of a corner of the screen. And I pasted the selection into the new diagram by inserting it onto the line after the activity. This results in the diagram you see here at the bottom right. So that's basically a copy paste. And then last but not least, you can turn a multi-selection into a sub-process. So in this example, I want to turn these four selected activities in a gateway in the diagram on the left into a sub-process. So I simply select them using control click and choose convert to sub-process from the menu. You can see the result here on the right. The sub-process, which I've named orientation training, has been created and the related elements be removed from the higher level diagram. So these are all of the different things that you can do when selecting multiple diagram elements. Now let's take a look at the custom activity numbering feature. Sometimes you may not like the numbers that BlueWorks 5 automatically assigns to your activities because sometimes it will keep number assignments based on the order in which you created added or added elements rather than the order they end up in after you move them around. So here's a good example. The obtained document activity, which is number 1.4 here, is the last one that will be executed in this first milestone. So I would prefer for it to have the highest number in that milestone. Basically, I'd like to make the forward document activity 1.4 and the obtained document activity 1.6. So now you can do that. You can change the activity numbers how you, as you like, and other users will see those numbers when they view the process diagram with activity numbering turned on. Um, these numbers will also show up on the documentation view as well as the Word, PowerPoint, and Excel exports. Now to change the activity numbers um, using the new numbering tool, to, in order to change the activity numbers, use the new numbering tool that's up on the right hand side of the toolbar here. And clicking on this will take you into this new dialog that looks like this. So here you can select use custom numbers and update the numbers that you want to change. You can also click the column headings to sort the numbers by activity, to sort by default numbers, or to sort by custom numbers. When you've finished updating your numbers, click Apply Changes, and the changes that you have made will be reflected on the diagram that you see in the background. You can also edit the activity numbers directly in place on the diagram if you prefer. Um, to do this, once you've selected Use Custom Numbers and clicked on Apply Changes, and close that, that custom numbering dialog, you'll then be able to edit the numbers directly in place on the diagram by clicking on the number and typing. So it's important to, to be aware that if you choose to edit the numbers in place, other users that have activity numbering turned on will see these changes as you're making them, um, including any duplicate number warnings, which I'll talk about next. So if you have a large number of changes to make to a diagram that's being actively viewed by others, it might be a good idea to change the numbering within the dialog rather than by editing it in place directly on the diagram. So there are a few warnings and, and error messages that might pop up while you're using custom activity numbering. You may see a little red warning sign next to the number. That means it's a duplicate. Um, you're, no, you're not the only one that will see that warning, as I mentioned, so any other editors that are in the same process diagram, um, if you're changing, if you're editing in place, they'll see that as well. If another user is updating the same process in a way that will impact the activity numbering, so if they're adding new activities, changing numbering, etc., you'll get a warning or an error. In these cases, it's important to coordinate with other users or your changes may not reflect their updates or you may overwrite their changes. So for example, if another user adds or removes activities, events, or gate gateways from the process at the same time as you're changing numbers, you'll see this yellow warning down here at the bottom. Basically, it tells you that you're no longer looking at the most recent copy of the list of activities and you might want to talk to the other user before you continue. If you click Apply Changes, Elements that the other user deleted are ignored, but all of your other changes are applied. Um, so be aware of that if you, if you decide to go ahead with that. And then in the event that another user is, is also updating activity numbers for the same process at the same time that you are, you'll see this red error down at the bottom of the dialog. And if you click Apply Changes, your changes could overwrite theirs. So you might want to talk to the other user uh, before you continue, figure out who's, uh, who's working on that process. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention 
um, about activity numbering, and that is that viewers can now turn it on by using the background menu on the process diagram, which of course is available by right-clicking on the background. They can also get a link to a process, they can resize activity names to fit, and they can expand all sub-processes now, which they weren't previously able to. So you can also move line labels now. Let's take a quick look at this. Sometimes you may not like where BlueWorks Live automatically puts a line label. Well, now you can move it anywhere along the length of the line and on either side of it by dragging and dropping. So when you hover over the label, you'll see this tooltip telling you you can click here to edit or click and hold to move. As you drag it, it will be highlighted in green anywhere where it's legal to drop it, otherwise it will be red. You can see in this example I've dragged the questions label closer to the respond to estimate activity on the right and I've placed it below the line. Now let's take a look at a new feature that we've added where you can customize your view of the BlueWorks Live repository. First of all, as you probably already know, the BlueWorks Live repository can be extended by adding custom properties. With this release, you, you can extend the repository with up to 30 custom process properties, 20 text, and 10 numeric. And to ensure that your process properties view doesn't become unwieldy now that there are potent potentially so many properties to view, we've added a new feature to let you customize your view. And the way this works is you'll see a new configure tool on the edit and view details panels. Here on the left, I'm in edit mode on the activity details panel where you can see the tool circled in, in, on the upper left. If you're working in view mode, as I am in the screenshot on the right, you'll see the configure tool in the corner above the view pane. So clicking on this tool will bring you into this new dialog. And here you can choose to hide or display each property by toggling on that eye icon. You can change the order in which the displayed properties appear in your view by dragging and dropping them into different positions. And at any point you can restore the default view by clicking on the Restore Defaults button. So with this new feature, you can choose just to see the properties that you're interested in, and you can order them based on their importance or likelihood of containing values or whatever. So for example, here I've created a customer journey map where I'm really interested in seeing the opportunities and customer goals associated with the end-to-end -end customer experience. So I've added these new fields as custom properties and moved them to the top of my view. Now when you customize your property details view, this carries over to the documentation view as you can see here. Um, it reflects the properties and the order as I've configured them in my example. And when I export to Word, you, I can choose to use my customized property view by selecting it at export time. So as you see in the Word export dialog on the left, I've opted to use my customized properties by clicking the box. And in case you're not sure, you can mouse over the tooltip and you'll get a list of the currently displayed set of customized properties. This will cause your Word export to only include the properties that are enabled in your custom view and in the order that you've configured them. So this is the new customizable property details view. And now let's take a look at some new options that are available for printing your process diagrams. For those of you that use printouts to tape up on your walls for doing process discovery and analysis, it can be a pain to piece all the pages back together after you print them out. We've introduced several new printing options to make this easier. If you look at the PDF print dialog, over on the right hand side of the slide, you'll see that there's a new option to page break on milestone boundaries, so you don't have to have page breaks going through the middle of activities, labels, and things like that. There's a new option to expand all embedded subprocesses so that you don't always have to remember to expand them on the diagram before you print them. There's another option to include a single page diagram overview, which helps you piece together subsequent pages. And there's a new option to include link processes so that you don't have to print them all independently if you want to see them as well. So let's take a quick look at these new options. Um, in this example here, for exa I've, I've selected to break on milestones and, and include a single page overview of the diagram. So if I did that, here's what it would look like. I get the diagram overview on the first page and then each of the successive pages has as many milestones as it can fit on a page while still breaking on a milestone boundary. Um, in the case where a milestone requires more than a page, then the page break won't happen on the milestone boundary, but in all other cases it will. 
Now, if I want to include link processes in the print, the print dialog will tell me how many link processes there are in the diagram now. If I choose to include them, then it will also tell me how many indirectly linked processes there are, meaning how many link processes there are linked to by linked processes. And it will give me the option of including those as well. Um, in this example, you can see in the dialog on the left that I've chosen to include the four linked processes as well as the two indirectly linked processes. So you can see the first page here is my main diagram, then the next four pages are the link processes in the order they occur in the main diagram, and the last two pages are the indirectly linked processes. So these are the new print options. And last but not least, we've enhanced the space export. If you're doing a space export that includes subspaces, you can choose to output all of the space contents to a single file by checking this box on the space export dialog now. And the space info will be output in a new format with an improved layout and a better organization of information. Um, there's also a new sheet for policy hyperlinks. Um, and the V2 format, it's also available for processes and decision Excel exports. Um, and on those, you'll see a new overview sheet as well. So the new format has a few, a few differences and it's better in my opinion. Um, we've kept the existing format V1 for backwards compatibility, but eventually we'll deprecate that. So those are the major enhancements. Um, there are a couple of other things that I'd like to mention. Uh, first of all, IBM's rolling out a new improved support portal that's supported by Watson Technology, um, and it'll provide greater transparency into ticket resolution workflow and has better self-service options. Um, the target date for that is April 9th, and so you'll need an IBM ID to use this new portal. Um, those of you that submit RFEs, you already have IBM IDs. That's what you use to log into the RFE tool um, and D IBM Developer Works and a lot of other IBM sites and tools. So if you don't have one, it's super easy to get one. Um, we've provided a bunch of info about the new support portal and how to use it on the BlueWorks Live blog. And I've included a link here on, the, on this slide in case you don't have the blogs enabled on your account. Uh, so you can just navigate directly to this. If you go to BlueWorks, there's another thing I wanted to mention. If you go to blueworkslive.com, you're going to be redirected to the BlueWorks Live IBM Marketplace page. Um, if, if that happens, you can sign in there. There are a couple different places on the page where it says sign in. Just do that and it'll take you to the regular BlueWorks Live login page for your sign in. Alternatively, uh, you can just bookmark blueworkslive.com backslash login and that will continue to take you directly to the regular BlueWorks Live login page. So that's what, that's what I'd recommend um, you do if you don't do that already. And then there are just a few little things I wanted to call out in case anybody's interested. Um, the account expiration date is now visible on your admin account management page. Um, people can, trial users, new, you know, new people signing up for new accounts can now use an IBM ID to register for a trial. Um, there's a new robotic task type available in the process diagram, um, basically for robotic process automation. And the, um, the invitation emails, they expire after three days now. So those are, um, you know, with that, I think we've, uh, you've seen this new release. There's a lot in it. Just to recap, um, we've improved the productivity and flexibility of diagram editing, provided more flexible printing options, enabled further customization of process properties, and enhanced space reporting. Um, you know, editors, we've, so we saw that editors can now select multiple diagram elements to move, copy, delete, and color. Selected elements can also be converted to a subprocess. We saw that editors can define custom activity numbering for their process diagrams, and that viewers can turn that activity numbering on in the diagrams they view. Um, we saw that editors can reposition line labels in their diagrams. And all users can configure their activity details panel to hide, display, and reorder properties. 10 additional custom text properties are available for extending the repository um, as well. And process diagrams can be printed with page breaks on milestone boundaries, with link processes included, with all subprocesses expanded, and with a single page diagram overview. Um, and last but not least, we saw there's a new format for the Excel space export, which allows subspaces to be exported to a single file. 
So with that, that kind of summarizes, you know, everything I wanted to share with you today. Let me go ahead and take us off of um, out of broadcast mode so that I can uh, take some questions if anybody has any questions. <laughs>